Hello, what's up YouTubers? It's Dansky and in this tutorial, we're going to be learning how you can design the UI for a photo post in Adobe Illustrator. So to start with, I'm going to paste in my photo of a super, super cute cat. There he is looking super cute. We're just going to pop him to one side for a second while we design the UI itself. So I'm going to click the rectangle tool, left click and hold shift anywhere on the artboard to create a perfect square. Now I'm going to use different shades of gray when I'm creating the UI itself. And then once we've got the layout and everything in the right place, we can then add a bit of polish and adjust the color. So I've got this for now. And what I'm going to do is select this shape, go up to object down to path, select offset path, and just tick the preview box. Now here it will show you the offset that you're creating. So at the moment, it's offsetting this shape by 10 pixels around the top, bottom, left and right sides. If I type in 30, you'll see that it adds more space. If I change this to minus 30, what it does is it adds this shape on the inside rather than the outside. So it's going to create a new shape when I click OK that is 30 pixels smaller around the top, bottom, left and right sides. So if we click OK, you'll see now that it has actually made that shape. So we've got our original shape and then our new shape, which is 30 pixels smaller on all sides. Now this new shape, I'm going to change the color of this to a darker gray, just so there's a distinction between the two while we're working on the layout. I'm also going to select this darker gray shape and just drag up from the bottom center. You should see this arrow here with a double ended arrow. So we'll just drag that one up. So this is where our image is going to sit of that super, super cute cat. And then we're going to select the type tool, left click anywhere on the artboard. And of course I'm going to type super, super cute cat. Your title for the image can be whatever you like. If it's a dog, don't worry that is okay. And of course, just pick your font. I'm going to go with good old Helvetica as always. Love that font. And I'm just going to align my text up to the edge here. So position the title of your photo. In fact, actually, I'm going to center the title of my photo and do something a bit different. So select the type tool. Just select and drag over all your text and where it says paragraph at the top, just click align center. Now it's always a good idea to have your smart guides on when doing this. So if you go to view and just check that smart guides has a tick next to it. As you drag this towards the center, you will see that a pink guide will appear indicating that this is now centrally aligned. So now everything in our UI design so far is aligned to the center, which is perfect. Now what I'm going to do is left click and hold shift and drag this down. And I'm going to select the type tool and we're going to type a date. So let's say June 2016. This photo was actually taken in the future. And I'm going to make this a slightly smaller size just to put a bit more focus on the image title. It's just nice to have the date as a reference. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to left align the date and I'm going to put that over on the left hand side here. And I'm going to click on the date and hold alt and shift to create a copy. Move this over to the right and then selecting the type tool. I'm going to change this to, oh, let's pick a number 236. Now this is going to represent the number of comments that the photos had because of course this cat is so damn cute everyone's going to want to comment on it. So we need to draw in a comment symbol. So we'll get to that one in a moment. So we're just going to select our divider line segment tool. Oh, at the moment, we've got a lot of different elements. We've got a centrally aligned title, a left aligned date and a right aligned number for the comments. So at the moment, everything in this space looks a little bit disorganized. It doesn't look like everything's really aligned or like it fits very well at the moment. So what I'm going to do, and this is a very common uh, tip that you can use to kind of ground a group of elements together or give them the illusion of having some structure, 
is we're just going to left click. You can see here the guides, nice, the, the pink guides are highlighting the edge of the photo, which is really helpful. You can just left click and hold shift until you see the other guide here. That's brilliant. And what this will do is create a divider. Now we don't want to add a fill, but instead select the stroke and we're just going to select another dark shade of gray for now. So what this does is it clearly separates the title from the date and the comments and these, these figures. And now it looks like June 2016 and 236, they are, are aligned to something. They are aligned to this divider right above them. Whereas before, there's quite a gap here between the photo and these numbers. And it just, this divider just gives it all a bit of structure and it makes this left alignment and right alignment and then the central alignment because it's a mix having some structure just makes it a bit more acceptable to the eye there we go i'm just going to drag this down a little bit just to give super super cute cat title a bit more space so it's not so crammed in a bit of breathing room is always important let's just make sure that's in the center vertically so there we go something that looks like that. So now what I'm going to do is just select the rectangle tool and I'm just going to drag across the entire artboard from the top left corner to the bottom right corner. And I'm going to create a background color. So let's just pick a shade of gray. I'm going to make this a global swatch and select preview and then go up to object, arrange center back. And with that layer still selected, I'm going to go to object, lock selection. So this background isn't going to be selected by mistake. So now we're going to start changing the color. So I'm going to select the, the outermost square or rectangle or four sided shape. And in the swatches palette, I'm going to select white. I'm then going to select the divider and I'm going to select shade of gray but one that isn't so dark. I want it to be there to give this text a bit of structure and to ground it, but I don't want it to be too distracting. So let's make that quite faint, just so it's visible, but not enough to distract the eye or to distract someone viewing the photo. We want all the focus to be on the photo and then secondarily the title. So we can change these now. We can change these to whatever color we like. I'm just going to have them a slightly off black color. Oh, so doing that, I had the stroke selected instead of the fill. So let's just swap that around. So I have the fill selected. Then I can change the color in the swatches palette. So there we go. All coming together quite nicely. Now let's take our super, super cute cat photo drag him on top. Now at the moment he is behind everything. If we go up to object, arrange and bring forward, note this shortcut key here because we can use that in a moment. And then I can just keep bringing him forward until he is in front of everything else, but behind our gray shape, because we're going to use this gray shape to mask this image. So if we select our cat photo and hold shift and then select the gray four sided shape, we can go up to object, clipping mask and make. Now, as I said, it's very important to make sure that the gray shape, the mask is on top of the photo. And when we click make, you'll see that the image is now cropped within that space. And if you're not happy with the crop, you can double click on the photo, adjust the crop like so, and still resize and everything as necessary. And then just up here in the top left, you've got these arrows that will take you back one level. Just click that until you're back out. I'm just going to make the date in the comments text a little bit lighter as well. Again, just to keep a little bit more focus on the title and you can make this text italic, bold, whatever you want to do to it. Now we're going to create the comments symbol so people know that this number of 236 refers to comments. So let's just left click and hold to select our ellipse tool. And we're going to draw 
an ellipse, something like this. Gray is absolutely fine for now. And then depending on how you want to do this, you can select the pen tool and the speech, kind of part of the speech bubble coming out. You can click, 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 click. And there you go. So you could have a straight one or you could go for a curved one. So selecting the pen tool, just left click, left click and hold to create that curve. Hold down the Alt key, because if we click now, it will try and continue that curve. We don't want that. So if we hold Alt and just click, it will force that to cut. And the next line we draw will be a straight line or a curved line if we left click and hold. So that's quite a handy tip, holding Alt and clicking the anchor point if you don't want it to force a curve. So we've got our speech bubble shape. We can just rotate that into position using the rotate tool here. So just make sure you've got something that you're happy with. And with the direct selection tool, you can click on any of these lines and these handles here that you can use to adjust the curve. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. And there we go. So once you're happy with that, you can select both of these shapes. If I go into preview mode using Command Y on the Mac or Control Y on the PC, at the moment we've got these two shapes. Now it's best practice to combine them into one shape. It just saves on complications and other things when you're finalizing a design. So let's select both of those. And in the Pathfinder palette, just select the top left one, which is Unite. And it will merge these together into one complete shape. So I'll just switch out of preview mode and there we go. We have our comments shape or speech bubble or whatever icon that you're using to represent this number here. So I'm going to drag this alongside and possibly just make this a pinch lighter because it is a solid shape. Whereas this text is all very linear, a solid shape can hold more attention because it is a big block of color. So let's just make that nice and faint, nice and small, but so it is recognizable that this number 236 is comments. And I'm just gonna add one more aesthetic preference. So let's just left click and hold to select the polygon tool. Left click anywhere on the artboard, select three as the number of sides and click okay. And then I'm just going to drag this triangle into position. Just look again for that pink guide so it snaps in place. Drag this down. You see again, it snaps it to the bottom nicely. Select the direct selection tool. Click on this top center anchor point and then using the arrow keys, just nudge that down. Now this part is entirely optional. It's just a design preference, but I'm going to create uh, an arrow that just kind of points from the title up to the image. So this is the title and then pointing up to the image. It's really just a design preference. It's not essential. I'm going to scale this down as well. So I'm going to click one of these four corners and holding shift and alt. I'm going to scale it down towards the center and zoom in nice and close and just drag that into place. You'll see there it snaps with the pink guides. Lovely. And I want this arrow to be the same color as the background as well. So we're gonna select white. And it actually doesn't look like it's central, so I'm just gonna drag this to the left. There we go. That looks a bit better. So sometimes it will align to different items, so you just need to make sure that it, the pink guide you've lined this up to is the one that is marking the center of the whole composition. And actually, if I just click on this four-sided white shape, around the edge and go to effect down to stylize and drop shadow. We can add a shadow just to help lift this off the page a little bit because the background, the main background, this light gray and the white of our post, they're very close to each other in terms of color. So they could kind of get lost. There's no clear distinction where the background ends and the photo begins specifically on users who may have a different monitor where these colors look a bit closer together than they actually are. So if we click that and go to effect, stylize and drop shadow, 
take the preview box and then we can make the blur nice and big so it's really soft give this an offset so this will nudge the shadow 10 pixels to the right and 10 pixels down and then you can change the opacity so we can drop this right down because we want the shadow to be really subtle just enough to create some distinction between the background and the white shape the, the photo post so something like this Now, one extra thing we could do when presenting this is just double clicking inside our cat photo. And I'm going to click on the original image, click edit and copy. And then in the top left, again, we're going to jump back out one level. And then I'm going to paste this image. And I'm going to scale this up. So holding shift, I'm going to scale this image so it's really, really big. Now don't worry if it does pixelate, I'm just going to scale it so it's bigger than the artboard itself. And then what I'm going to do is select the rectangle tool and from the top left to the bottom right I'm going to drag to create a four-sided shape. Let's just drag that and make sure that is lined up to the edge of the artboard. And then I'm going to left click on this huge cat image and hold shift to select the four-sided shape we've just created. Make sure that this shape is on top. Go to object, clipping mask, and make. Then we're going to go to object, arrange, and send to back. And then we're going to bring it forward just by one so it's in front of the gray background. So now we have another cat background. And what I'm going to do is go to effect, down to blur, select Gaussian blur, select the preview box and we can now increase the blur there we go so we've got 40. so now we've added this stylized background just a repetition of the cat image but blurred i think we could probably strengthen this shadow up just to help that stand out more so if we select our white four-sided shape go over to the appearance palette and we'll have our drop shadow listed here. We can just click that, select preview, and we can adjust the opacity and we can really bring that up. Let's try possibly 60, maybe 70. There we go. And if I just take a step back and forward, you can see the difference. So there we go, that's with the shadow set to about 20% opacity, and this is at 70%. So it really helps lift it off that blurred background. And there we go, we've created a photo post UI design in Adobe Illustrator. As always guys, I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.